everyone. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to use flash and a reflector to balance ambient light. So the other day Tony and I were out taking pictures in these beautiful fall leaves and I noticed that the reflection of the leaves was making his face look really orange and unattractive. So it was this beautiful glow in the background and then it was kind of yucky and you go in and you try to balance it in post-processing and it can be a mess. So instead we pulled out a flash and a reflector. I'm going to bounce a little bit of light onto him and make his skin tones look more natural. So you can see that without the flash, we still have nice light, but there are some dark shadows on his face and there's an orangish tint. So I turn my flash on and I have it at 1 16th, but it will be different for everyone depending on your environment. So I'm getting a bit of dappled light on his face, so I'm having him move back, and then I'm gonna have to move my flash and reflect it. Yeah, anytime you're just shooting with sunlight as the main light, you just end up chasing the sun a little bit. It just moves around. And the sun is coming through trees, so it's very dynamic. So as the model, I'm actually looking to see where the sun is hitting me and getting it blocked as much as possible because that's that hard light that's going to look bad. Oh, we got a car coming. Hopefully they don't mind. And because we're in the street, we're managing vehicle traffic. All right, let's try that again. And I'm just going to crouch down to get some of those bright leaves in the background and now the light looks even. It still has the same warm tones. It doesn't seem like it's two different light sources, uh, but it looks a lot better. That looks nice, but it's still pretty warm, so I'm just gonna tilt this towards you a little bit more to get a okay. little closer. I might even need more. Output from the flash? Yeah. It's still coming out really orange. So I moved my flash and reflector to the other side because he was getting a lot of the light bounced off of these leaves and into his face. And the sunlight is coming from this side, which isn't going to be as warm. So I'm trying it from this angle as well. And so far the light is coming out a little bit better. Haha. <laughs> I think these look good, what do you think? I think we got it. Yeah, I think they look nice. So now I'm gonna upload my photos and look at them and do a little bit of post-processing. So I culled through my pictures and I pulled up a few pictures that serve as a good example. So first you can see what our photo looked like without flash. It doesn't look bad. There's not really a catch light in the eyes. And Tony's skin tones are a bit yellow, but I wouldn't say it's anything too extreme. But with the flash, you can see that it adds a little bit of hard light. You can see there's a catch light in his eyes and his skin tones are more natural. So let's go back there just so I can show you. So without a flash, with a flash. Now I will say even when you're using the flash and the reflector, uh, you'll still get some yellow skin tones, but they're easier to fix in post, and this is why. It makes all of the, the uh, ambient colors, the ambient light, more of a similar color. So when you're working with no flash, you'll see you just get some yellow highlights, maybe just around the person's chin, or maybe just on their, the apples of their cheeks, or just in the catch light. When you use the flash, even though the overall tone might be more yellow, since you have all of these yellow leaves bouncing yellow everywhere, it's bound to happen. So even though you have that yellow, the flash is neutralizing the highlights and neutralizing a lot of the colors on the face and making the colors of the light more even, so there aren't really drastic changes. So 
let's say you get your picture pulled into Photoshop and it's still a bit yellow. Uh, I'll show you what you can do to make the skin more neutral. I think this photo is fine, but just as an example, I'll show you. So click here, go to selective color and choose the yellows. And then I'm going to move Tony aside so I can see what I'm doing here. And you play with these sliders to get the skin tones, the colors that you want them to be. So of course we'll drag down the yellows. If you do it too much, then your subject's face will start to look ashy or unnatural. Here it's not bad, so I'll just drag it down to about negative 15%. You'll see that that starts to impact the magentas because you're pulling out the yellows, then the pinks start to look more prominent, so we'll pull down the magentas a bit. Okay. Now what you may have noticed is that it also impacted the colors of the trees. That's really subtle. You can do much more if you're having more of a problem with it. Select your mask and do Control or Command I and that will invert your mask. So now those edits are nowhere to be seen. You'll have to take your brush, use white, and then brush in your edits. So I'm doing Control plus to zoom in. I could use my Wacom tablet, but I'm not. I say that because you guys always tell me my Wacom shortcuts and I just tend to go between my tablet and my keyboard. So if it's not drastic enough, you can go back to your slider by double clicking here. So we can make Tony's face more pink. You can see if we drag down the magentas, he looks very green. I'm just showing you the capabilities because my edit isn't, it's so subtle, it's difficult to see what I'm doing. So I'm kind of just playing around to show you what it's capable of here. Okay. I'll go back to my mask and I'll make sure that I paint this in more neatly so that uh, I don't miss any spots. I'll get his hair too, because his hair is white, so you know, we don't want it to look yellow, like an old lady. We want it to be nice and bright. And then I will lower my opacity to about 80%, and I'll encourage you to do that too. I usually like to make my edits and then back off of them. So that's pretty much it for the color casting video, but I'm just gonna show you a few extra tips while we're here, things that I would do to this photo, and they involve that selective color again. So I would go to the selective color once again, and still I've selected the yellows because I'm going to add more color to the leaves. We'll make them more orange. Let's see, play around. Bring up the yellows, brighten that up. And bring the blacks up just a tiny bit to add more contrast. I'm trying to drop this in here. There we go. And then once again, I'll select the mask, control or command I, and I will paint in those edits. So I have my mask selected, and then I'll use my paintbrush with some white, and I'll just add in more color. I wanna make sure not to paint over Tony because we don't want him to look orange. That defeats the purpose. But you can see that the colors just look slightly more intense, but still natural. And then one other thing I usually do, I'll go into a curves layer and then drop my curves down a bit. Again, Control I to invert it, and then I will paint in some shadows where they were lost. Sometimes you can add light and people lose the dimension on their face. So here, wow, that's not right. We want a very soft brush. And I'll make it a bit bigger. And just bring those shadows back in under his jaw.
And then like I usually do, I just back off my edits a little bit. And you can see that that just adds some shadows back to his face. And I also like to add shadows to people's hairlines because that can tend to get blown out. And I just keep going because now I'm stuck on this edit and I can't stop. So now we're going to curves and we're pulling them up to make your picture brighter. Control I to invert it again. And the same thing, you can paint in some highlights if you want. Add that bridge back to his nose that got lost. And that looks a little unnatural, but you know me, I'm going to back off of that a little bit. Now I'll go down to about 50% with that. Very subtle. And there you have it. So you can see Tony no longer looks yellow and the background has more color added to it. So it's more vibrant while still looking natural. If you liked this video, please subscribe and like, and we'll be putting out more free videos just like this one. If you'd like to see more uh, Photoshop tips, we'll be having a Photoshop book coming out soon. We also have a general photography book out called Stunning Digital Photography. The link is in the description. Thank you very much. Oh, we should do some like this, Tony. Okay, hang on. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> then we just kind of awkwardly land on your head. <laughs> <laughs>